What's up guys, it's Albert in Muffin Group. Sorry for the few weeks of absence, but we were working on something bigger and we needed to focus on it. Nevertheless, today I'm really excited to show you all these great features and tell you a bit about newest update, version 27.2. We've added a lot of new options that you've been asking a lot about lately. I hope you're gonna like what I want to present you in a moment. The update comes with some really handy features so let's not waste any more time and head over to my screen to discuss them closer. Developer mode. The first thing I would like to show you is developer mode for the B-Builder. To enable it, all you have to do is edit page with the B-Builder. By default, it's in default mode. And under settings, in the very left bar, change user interface to developer. We will be asked by the builder if you want to save the work and reload or just reload. As I've not been doing any changes on the page right now, I will just reload it. From now on, we have developer mode enabled. It's something I've been waiting for personally. This mode is really powerful, what I'm gonna show you in a moment. It is worth mentioning that the mode of the editor is assigned to a specific user which means that each user working on the same project can decide which style of the B-Builder suits him better. As you may have noticed, at first glance, we've moved the very left bar to the top. Thanks to this, we gained nearly 100 pixels in width, which should be especially appreciated by those working on narrower screens, mainly laptops. Another reason why we did this is the new layer navigator. It's basically the same as before, but much improved and I'm sure you will enjoy using it from now on. Let's activate navigator then. You can do this in two ways. Clicking on the layer button on the top bar or just using Ctrl or Command plus I shortcut. By default, navigator is kind of floating bar that can put anywhere you like by drag and drop. However, since version 27.2, you can stick it to the right edge of the screen and that's what I like the most about it. To stick it, just drag navigator and you are gonna see this blue shadow coming out of the right side of the screen. And now, all we have to do is just move our navigator onto that shadow and drop. That's it! There is also another method to stick the navigator to the right side. Under settings, you can choose between the default and side value for navigator. What I show you right now is side option, of course. So let me show you what the navigator can do from now on. Firstly, we can quickly close the navigator by clicking the cross or the layer navigator. Secondly, we can expand the tree of all layers by clicking on the icon to the left of the close icon. It expands all sections and wraps, of course, so you can see all the elements. And now, whenever you click on section, wrap or element in that navigator tree, you will be taken with content in the middle to the right place. Quite convenient, isn't it? If you don't want to work on a fully expanded tree, just click the same icon again to collapse the tree. Now, we can open, close the layers we want to work on. Another quite interesting and useful functionality is the ability to move insert or taking out sections, wraps or elements directly in Navigator. Let's say I want to move that section under the section below or take this element and put it into this wrap. It's that simple. As you have noticed, every movement is reflected in the middle part where we have all the content. And another convenience is the ability to use the right mouse button on Navigator layers. Let's say you want to edit this element or remove this one or maybe duplicate this wrap. Nothing simpler. As you can see from now on, you can do all these actions directly in the navigator. Okay, that's it for the navigator. Let's move on to what's on the top bar. Starting from the left, first icon next to the B logo is plus. From here, you can add elements to the content, create favorites or filter them by categories. The next icon is pre-built sections. From here, you can insert pre-built sections directly into the content. If you didn't have any chance to watch my video regarding this feature, I will leave you the link to that tutorial in the left top corner so you can watch it anytime. The next icon is Export Import. 
From here, you can export import existing content, insert templates, import single pages, export import presets, or even use Builder to CO. The next icon is single page import. We've moved this functionality to the top bar so that you have faster access to importing your favorite pages. And if you didn't watch my video regarding this functionality as well, I will leave you also the link to the tutorial in the left top corner. The next icon is history. Here you can do revisions, backups, or even restore content from autosave that save changes automatically every five minutes. The next icon is settings. This one has three sub options. Page options. These are options for this particular page on which we are working at the moment. Theme options. Global sections for whole theme where you can set things like global typography, global colors, etc. And the last one are settings for the B-Builder where you can find useful shortcuts, change builder mode, user interface, etc. Now let's move on to the middle part of the upper bar. Here we have a drop down menu where first option is edit page. This one will take us to the WordPress editor page. The next option is edit another page. When you click which, the pop-up with list of all pages, templates, etc. will appear. From here, you can click edit and you will be taken to the B-Builder editing of that specific page. And the last option is in the drop-down, of course, back to the WordPress. This one just takes us to the WordPress admin. Next to the drop-down, you have now responsive mode icons, so you don't have to hover over the right icon in the left bottom corner, just like in the default mode, but all responsive breakpoints are available at your fingertip, so you can switch to any breakpoint in no time. Yes, as you've probably noticed, we've added an extra breakpoint for laptops that applies to resolutions between 960 pixels and 1440 pixels. So let's move on to the icons located on the top bar on the right. The first icon is back to WordPress. As it says, it takes you to the place where you previously been. The next one, question mark, is a drop down menu where from you can go directly to support center, ticket system, documentation, video tutorials, Facebook community, etc. Thanks to this, you will be able to find the answer to your questions even faster. The next icon is navigator. Within this icon, you can easily disable enable it. The next two icons are undo and redo. Whenever you're working on something, these icons might be active or inactive. The next icon is view page. By clicking which, you can quickly open page in front end if you want to, of course. The next one is generate preview. And the last one, the most visible one is update button. If you're a fan of shortcuts, instead of clicking that button, you can easily use Ctrl or Command plus S to save your work anytime you like. That's it for the developer mode. If something is unclear about this feature, feel free to ask the comments down there in the section and I will be glad to help you. Nested wraps. The other feature we've added into version 27.2 is ability to put wrap into another wrap. If for some reason you need to put a wrap into a wrap because your design requires it, from now on you can do this. Thanks to this solution, you can create even more advanced layouts. Let me show you how it looks exactly. So from now on, when you have an empty wrap, you have two buttons, add element and add wrap. As soon as you click add wrap, there will be another wrap added into that wrap, but it's a pink color to make it visible and clear that you put there a wrap. And now if for some reason you want to grab parent wrap directly from content and not the navigator, or you can hover over that pink bar and it will slightly move to the right side so you can hover over that little gray space on the left to reach parent wrap settings. Or you can click select parent option on the bar of pink wrap to open its settings directly. What you can basically do with wraps also is just drag and drop them into another wraps. You can do exactly the same in navigator directly. Let me drag and drop such example, wrap and content so you can see how it works. Quite simple, isn't it? That's it for nested wraps. If you also have any questions about this functionality or would like me to show it closer, maybe on an example, 
Let me know in the comment section down there and I will do my best to help you. History mode. Another thing that has been improved is history mode. We've added Ajax mode so from now on you can switch between the default and Ajax history mode and settings. You may wonder what for we did it. So it's worth to switch to Ajax mode when you have for example a lot of content on page but not enough space in local storage as browsers are limited up to 5 mega of local storage. Let me switch to Ajax mode to show you what's the difference. So now, if we do any change on site and want to redo change, we will see additional preloader for a moment. And that's basically it for the history mode. Theme plates. Theme plates are a section that we had to modify a bit as well to make it more consistent with overall B theme layout. Nevertheless, we wanted to make things here more transparent and clear. The changes are mainly in appearance. We modified tabs a bit, so now templates like block or single post are grouped under block tab, portfolio archive and single portfolio grouped under portfolio tab, shop and single product under WooCommerce, but sections and wraps under global. Thanks to this, we saved space in header and everything looks much nicer. Also, each type of template has its own color which is reflected in the list below for easier and faster identification of what we are looking for. Moreover, each template type has its own icon with TMP label and right color. I hope that navigating the templates will be even easier and more pleasant now. Single post and portfolio templates. Single post and portfolio templates are something that we have added with this update too. This means that from now on, you can create templates for both single posts and portfolios and assign them for specific type of pages using conditions. You can create them just like any other type of template. If you think that it would be great to explain both templates, just let me know down there in the comment section. By the way, portfolio and block archives are on their way, so should be available with next update. That's why are currently marked with soon label. New breakpoint for laptop. Just like already mentioned in developer mode, with newest update, we have added additional breakpoint, mainly useful for laptops, with screens between 960 pixels and 1440 pixels. This may not be the option you use often, but there are cases where it might be really helpful. You will find this breakpoint in the B-Builder on the top bar in developer mode, in the left bottom corner in default mode, but also next to each field under elements that lets you make edits in specific breakpoints. It's also worth mentioning that from now on, tablet version will inherit settings from laptop, of course, if they are filled. Product tabs for single product template. With latest update, we've also added product tabs element for single product theme plates, which so far was available for predefined single product styles only. What does it mean? No less, no more that from now on, whenever you're building custom single product theme plate for products, you can put this element that contains description, additional information and reviews. If you think that this element should be discussed, by me in more detail, also just let me know in the comment section. Free delivery progress bar for WooCommerce. This WooCommerce feature is great choice if you want to offer free delivery option uh, over a certain amount. This option can be enabled in theme options, shop, add-on section. It has only one option, Zoom, where you can define over what value delivery is free. As soon as this option is enabled, if you go to the cart, you will see that delivery progress bar that would tell you how much left to free delivery. I really hope you're gonna like this feature as it's something many of you have been asking for recently. Fake sale pop-up notification for WooCommerce. And another feature for WooCommerce have been added with recent update, fake sale pop-up notification. Personally, I'm not a fan of this type of features, but due to your inquiries and this matter, we've added such an option to the B. You will find this option under theme options, shop, add-on section. 
There is a couple of options available here after enabling this feature, like displaying fake clients' names, various types of sales, etc. Also, if you don't like the default styling under Advanced Design, you can style this pop-up as you like. If you want me to make a tutorial regarding this WooCommerce feature, please just let me know in the comment section and I will do my best to make such video. So that's basically it for this update and the major changes that came with it. I hope that we managed to fulfill the wishes of at least some of you. Apart from the major changes I mentioned in this video, there are also a few smaller things and improvements that I really hope you will notice in your daily work. If you want to know more about this update, just check our changelog in the description. And as always, thanks for watching and remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time we release a new video. And if you have more questions, please visit our support center at support.muffingroup.com.